In the final hours of the Battle of Berlin, on the afternoon of April 30th, 1945, German Chancellor Adolf Hitler, together with Eva Braun, committed suicide in his bunker at the Reich Chancellery in Berlin. Understanding that the war was already lost for the Third Reich, and not wanting to be captured by the Soviet troops advancing on the German capital. But what's behind all this? What happened before those days, when Adolf himself knew that Germany had fallen? Let's find out. Rise to power. The Germany of the 1930s faced a series of economic, political, and social challenges. After its defeat in World War I and the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, the country was in a precarious situation. It was subjected to harsh war reparations, its economy was in ruins, and there was deep dissatisfaction among the population due to the conditions imposed by the treaty. In this crisis context, radical political movements emerged, including the National Socialist German Workers' Party, better known as the Nazi Party, led by Adolf Hitler. Hitler, a charismatic speaker and political agitator, promised to restore Germany's greatness and fight against the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. In the 1932 elections, the Nazi party became the largest party in the Reichstag, the German parliament, although it didn't have an absolute majority. However, the ruling coalition at the time was unable to address the country's economic and political problems. Finally, in January 1933, German President Paul von Hindenburg appointed Hitler as Chancellor of Germany. Hitler's rise to power marked the beginning of a radical transformation in Germany. Leveraging his position, he consolidated power, suppressed political opposition, outlawed other parties, and established an authoritarian regime known as the Third Reich. His agenda included territorial expansion, the persecution of minorities, the promotion of militarism, the reintroduction of conscription, and the spread of Nazi ideology in all aspects of German citizens' lives. This period of upheaval created international tensions. As other European nations that upheld liberal democracy watched with concern, Hitler's actions, and the growing hostility on the continent. Tensions escalated until France and the United Kingdom declared war on Germany after the Wehrmacht invaded Poland on September 1, 1939, marking the beginning of the most devastating conflict in history. Although it cannot be said that it was easy for Germany, the Polish campaign was a relatively brief conflict and, compared to later battles, involved less strategic complexity. The military superiority of the Wehrmacht was quickly felt. It was one of the most powerful and advanced military forces in the world. They had experience in Blitzkrieg, a lightning warfare tactic based on surprise attacks and rapid movements. Additionally, they had modern equipment and a formidable air force. In addition to this, the surprise and coordination with which they executed the attack were crucial. The Germans focused on coordinating their land and air forces, as well as surprise attacks. The Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, played a significant role in destroying Polish infrastructure and disrupting communications. Furthermore, before the invasion, Germany and the Soviet Union signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, a secret agreement that divided Poland between the two countries. This meant that Poland faced an invasion from two fronts, making its defense impossible. In less than five weeks, in the early days of October, they surrendered. Battle of France. Months later, the German generals decided to invade France, as they couldn't afford to have a declared enemy on their western flank. How long do you think it took them? From May 10th to June 25th, yes, just those 46 days in the year 1940. Once again, the Blitzkrieg devised by the brilliant Heinz Guderian was put into action to sweep away the French troops. The Maginot Line, which was a series of fortifications and defenses built along the Franco-German border, was bypassed. Instead of directly attacking this line, Germany encircled it by passing through Belgium and Luxembourg. This maneuver avoided the strongest defenses and completely surprised the French. The French morale and political collapse due to the speed of the German offensive were almost immediate and undermined confidence in French leadership. There were political divisions and a sense of imminent defeat that affected the morale of the French forces. However, this would open a Western Front for Germany from that moment until the end of the war, as after more than 100 days of bombing London, they failed to achieve the surrender of England, and this would have lethal consequences for Germany years later. Operation Barbarossa Named after the legendary emperor of the ancient Reich, Frederick Barbarossa. This was the most ambitious military operation of the entire war, with the very clear goal to occupy the Soviet Union. For this massive offensive, Germany mobilized 4 million soldiers, 3,500 tanks, and 5,000 aircraft. The initial success of Operation Barbarossa was astonishing. 
and characterized by a series of notable strategic advances by German forces. The invasion of the Soviet Union began on June 22, 1941, and completely caught Soviet leaders by surprise. Despite warnings of an imminent German attack, the element of surprise was a significant factor in the initial success of the operation. A swift territorial advance by Army Group Center rapidly pushed into Soviet territory. They captured thousands of square kilometers of land in the first weeks of the invasion, outnumbering and outorganizing Soviet forces. Stalin's purges in the Red Army in the years leading up to the invasion had weakened the Soviet Army's command and control capability. This resulted in a lack of coordination and effective communication among Soviet units. Additionally, they initially had favorable weather conditions. The summer of 1941 was particularly dry in some regions of the Soviet Union, allowing German forces to advance more easily across the terrain. First turning point. Having gained control over the territories of Ukraine, Belarus, Latvia, Lithuania, Moravia, and important urban centers in Western Russia like Smolensk, with very few casualties, and while wreaking havoc among Soviet troops, the German army faced its first setback in December 1941, being forced to halt the operations due to harsh winter that engulfed the region, with the German army being less than 50 kilometers away from Moscow. Among the Soviet high command, the comments circulated, General Winter has defeated us. Second turning point, Germany did not fight the war alone. Italy and Japan were its key allies in the alliance known in history as the Axis. In that December of 1941, while Winter slowed down the Wehrmacht's advance towards Moscow, one of the greatest mistakes of the war also occurred. Germany's ally, Japan, decided without consultation to launch a surprise attack on the American naval base Pearl Harbor, located in Hawaii, as part of Japan's imperial ambition to dominate the Pacific. The consequences were catastrophic. The United States, the sleeping industrial giant that had remained neutral until then, was forced to declare war on the Axis powers. Following this attack, and will later directly enter the conflict in Europe by deploying troops. Third turning point. After defeating Poland in a month, France in 46 days, and having conquered a third of the Soviet Union in less than five months, the myth of the invincibility of the Wehrmacht had spread. In the first three years, only a madman could think that Germany would lose the war, but that myth would completely crumble starting in 1942. After seven months of fighting in the city of Stalingrad, Hitler experienced his first defeat in the war, when the remnants of the German Sixth Army surrendered in February 1943. It was the battle with the highest human cost in universal history, with the death toll exceeding two million lives, including German soldiers and Russian civilians. A moral blow to the army. Knowing the gravity of the situation in Stalingrad, weeks before the outcome, Hitler made the decision to appoint Field Marshal Friedrich von Paulus, the general in charge of the Sixth Army during the siege of Stalingrad. In German military history, no field marshal had ever surrendered. Hitler made this appointment to force von Paulus to fight to the last man and not even consider surrender. However, seeing his soldiers devoid of ammunition, logistical support, surrounded in the midst of winter, and with almost no food reserves, he made the decision to surrender with nearly 200,000 soldiers still capable of combat. For added humiliation, the Red Army held a parade in the streets of Moscow with the hundreds of thousands of German prisoners of war demonstrating that the tide had turned on the battlefield forever. Fourth turning point. Months after the resounding failure in Stalingrad, in July, the Third Reich launched an offensive on the city of Kursk. What initially seemed like a minor skirmish for control of a medium-sized city turned into the largest tank battle of the war. 3,300 German tanks against 5,500 Russian tanks. It concluded the following month, with the German army's advance being halted. It was the last offensive of the Third Reich, Germany would never again have the initiative on the Eastern Front. From that battle onward, they dedicated themselves exclusively to defending positions and retreating until the war reached Berlin, leading to the inevitable end. Fifth turning point. Do you remember when we told you that Germany would regret not forcing England to surrender? Well, the following year, as if facing the setbacks on the Eastern Front in 1943 weren't enough, in June 1944, the United States initiated the naval operation known by the code name Overlord. Landing hundreds of thousands of American troops, they broke through the German Atlantic Wall that had sworn the occupied shores of France were impregnable, liberating the French country alongside all the Western allies that hadn't yet succumbed. This opened a wound on the Western Front that the exhausted Germans, already reeling from the collapse of the Eastern Front, could never close. Having two war fronts they couldn't sustain. Facing both the United States and the Soviet Union simultaneously, 
the two world powers of the time, and having the misfortune of having such mediocre allies within the Axis that rarely coordinated military tactics during the conflict are the main reasons why Germany, despite its undeniable initial success, ultimately lost World War II and bid farewell forever to its expansionist ambitions in Europe. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. See you next time.